Well, hello kitties. Here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from No SLLC. That's me. This time it's my Price Fister faucet fixing adventure in the laundry room. Some of you have seen my other how to fix it Price Fister thingy for the shower valve. Well, this one's uh, it crapped out in the laundry room. I think uh, probably because my house is uh, approaching that age when everything falls apart. I'm about 11 years, almost 12 years, I think. So, uh, carrying on with my little adventures, uh, here we go. First, let me tell you that I've got some hardwood floors in my house. Actually, we spent a whole bunch of money to put the hardwood floors in all over the first floor of the house. And we had to put in on a diagonal, too, which made it even more expensive. And with great regularity, my wife tries to ruin our hardwood floors because she overfills all of our plants, which is why I finally figured out, gee, I ought to be able to move those plants easily to mop up all the water. So I um, built some roll-around things to roll the plants around so I can roll them out of the way and mop the water up. That is, if I can figure out that there's water on the floor before it gets too bad. Because once uh, you get a leak in a hardwood floor like this, what happens is the end of the planks right here puckers up terribly. It really, it's kind of scary looking. You don't think it's ever going to go back down. And depending on how long the water sat there, um, it can get pretty bad. But uh, usually it comes back down and just leaves this black line across the, uh, the joint right there. But you can still tell quite a few places in the house where um, we've had a, a few um, water overflows in the plants. And that goes uh, doubly for out here in the laundry room because a leak here can go undetected for quite some time uh, depending on how bad the leak is and because uh, these uh, the washer and dryer up on pedestals um, they're pretty heavy they're hard for for me to move around um, so if we do get a leak uh, under here it's going to be really really difficult to clean up um, and also some of you have probably had this happen uh, the, the hoses will break on the washer you know the hot water the cold water hoses will break and you end up flooding your whole house not a good deal so in anticipation of that uh, I installed these armored uh, hoses right here but you know even armored hoses eventually fail and sometimes you know just inside the uh, washing machine you'll have something fail so I um, took it upon myself to um, purchase these um, emergency shutoffs these two solenoids right here they screw onto the uh, hot and cold water outlet and then you put the hoses on the end of those things and these uh, solenoids right here are controlled by this re this uh, controller unit up here. And if it detects water on the floor, it shuts off the hot and cold so that there's no pressure even on the um, uh, hoses. So uh, it's a good deal. keeps you from flooding your whole house. The uh, little thing that sits on the floor down here, if it gets wet, it shorts across these little strips right here. And it tells the control unit up here to shut those valves off, which are behind here. And if you do have these kinds of washers and dryers um, and you put them up on pedestals, you see that uh, you couldn't physically reach back here to get these things to shut them off. So basically, uh, you don't want water on a hard, hard, hardwood floor. It's really, really not a good thing. So uh, I was walking out to the laundry room the other day and my uh, patented stocking foot water detector went squish, squish. And there was a big puddle about this big on the floor. And the first thing I think is, of course, it's leaking from uh, behind the um, washer. But I uh, did a little dis discovery work um, and figured out that it wasn't coming from there. It was, in fact, coming from under the sink. Oh, that's not good. So I get up under the sink, and it appears that the water is dripping off of this flex hose right here. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's like mm, one of the joints because the flex hose joins to the copper pipe going up to the fixture itself. So I, I turned the water off and uh, tried to figure out where it was coming from. I couldn't find any particular water, you know, nothing dripping off of these things. So I actually let it sit there for a little while and uh, tried to figure it out after I mopped up all the water off the floor, of course, and out of the bottom of the uh, sink cabinet. Um, and then a couple days later, I turned it back on, and there were no leaks. I didn't see any leaks, so I let it sit for another day or two and went back out, and guess what? It's leaking. So I kept looking and looking to try to figure out where it was coming from, and guess what? It was dripping off of one of these hold-downs right here. Now, that'll tell you something right away, because this is just a mechanical hold-down. shouldn't have any water on it at all. The water goes in the pipes right here and up into the uh, faucet 
And so, uh, my tentative conclusion, of course, was that it's leaking out of the faucet mechanism and then going underneath this chrome piece and then dripping down on the hold down. That's kind of what I figured out. So, um, there's something wrong here, right? So, that means I have to tear it apart. Now, this is a Price Fister. Uh, it says so right there. Now, when I was uh, doing the uh, uh, laundry or the uh, shower valve thing. I don't know why in the world I never looked over here to see that I had Price Vister in my house, but I didn't. But it's real obvious that's uh, what it is, Price Vister. Single handle, uh, double motion. So you go up, back and forth with it and turn left and right for hot and cold and uh, back and forth for uh, uh, how hard the water comes squirting out. So we're going to fix this uh, Price Vister single lever valve. Um, and the first thing to do is put the plug in the sink you know, I don't know how many times that's happened to people, but uh, you drop little parts down that daggone thing, and then you got to take apart the drain, and it's a real pain. So put the plug in the sink. It's such a simple, easy thing to do. And then you pop the little cap off right there. It just pries out, and there's a screw under there. Uh, the cap can only go on one way, so the price fister is, uh, you know, straightforward. It would be R-E-T-S-I-F-P, Tercifip something if it was backwards um, so pull that little cap out of there that gives you that screw and then you use a Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew that and it's a screw too it's a pointy thingy so it will screw down inside this nylon thing here so unscrew that take the handle off and that leaves you with this little widget right here sticking up out of this uh, chrome collar alright so then you unscrew the chrome collar there's the threads right there the screw down right there and don't use a wrench because you, you'll scratch this all up it's just hand tight it's kind of tight but it's just hand tight so unscrew that lefty loosey righty tighty you know and then um, you can pull the faucet off it, it's just uh, pushed down on there so you grab a hold of the faucet handle out here in this part of the chrome piece and you kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull it up uh, I wasn't really sure at the time because I never had seen one of these before exactly how that came off. It was kind of tight, but it does just slide right off the top. So just pull it off the top by wiggling it and kind of rotating it around a little bit. And uh, you'll notice that there are two rubber uh, O-rings right here in some grooves. And then there's this uh, nylon ring down here. You don't need to take the nylon ring off if it's not broken because that's just like a thrust washer. It just allows the bottom of the uh, nozzle piece here to kind of slide around like this. This is the important part, these two uh, O-rings. That's what keeps the water from uh, squirting out the top and the bottom. Uh, when the, le uh, the valve is turned on, there's a hole in the back of this thing, way back around here, and the water literally comes around and fills this part of the chamber right here, and it's between this and this, right? So uh, there's a bit of pressure here as the water goes out the nozzle. So this is, um, this is what keeps the water from leaking out all over the upper part of this chrome piece. Okay, then you can... Um, pull out the uh, cartridge. You notice there's a little tab right here. It fits in this slot back here. The hole, you can't see the hole where the water actually comes out back here, but it's it's down in there. Uh, so you can lift out this uh, cartridge uh, after you've taken the uh, hold down nut off. And let me back up and show you again. This is a hold down nut. It unscrews lefty loosey, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So uh, you you uh, un, un, uh, screw that out of there and then you can lift out this little um, cartridge. Now I used a pair of uh, water pump pliers here very carefully because this is a piece of nylon and I didn't want to mess up the threads in here. Um, and it's a good thing too because uh, they back ordered this piece right here. I couldn't, I couldn't get it so I had to put this back in as I'll show you in a moment. Okay, then after you pull that cartridge out, make sure you look down inside here and pull out this little rubber gasket, right, that's going to be sitting down inside there. You don't want to leave that in there, take that thing out, because that's what fits into the bottom of the cartridge right here. So make sure you get that out of there. And then you can pry off the two O-rings right here. I use this really small little jeweler screwdriver to kind of get in there. and they're, they're real soft, so you can just lift them right out. So these are the parts that need to repl be replaced. Additionally, the hold down thing too, but I couldn't get that. So this is what you want. And of course the gasket that goes with it. And then the two O-rings that keep you from getting water squirting all over the place. 
Now, I couldn't identify my faucet type when I went up on the Price Fister website. They got a bazillion pictures, and you try to find the one you have. So uh, I called their um, warranty line, as I did before, and guess what? They um, recognized my phone number right off and said, Oh, well, howdy, dude. What are you back for this time? And I s uh, described what I had, a single-handle faucet, and... Um, you know, the size and shape and blah, 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 like that. And they sent me out the uh, cartridge and the two rings. But the, uh, like I said, the um, hold down thing was back ordered. And uh, they sent them for free, except for the five bucks it cost to ship it, because I am the original owner. And their warranty covers it forever, as long as you're the original owner. Now, like I said, I couldn't get that part, so I had to reuse that. But this one's supposed to be a new brass one. I guess eventually it'll get here. Uh, the new uh, cartridge, though, looks a little different than the old one. The old one had this separate little um, gasket here, but the new one has the rubber gasket built into the little grooves right there. But other than that, it's, uh, it's the same, works the same way. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is uh, get rid of any uh, um, uh, calcium buildup that may be in the grooves here because you're going to put the uh, new uh, O-rings in there. So you don't want any calcium buildup in there. You could use a little calcium uh, removal stuff. Um, and then the other thing is inside of the nozzle itself. Now this is where the O-ring on the bottom here originally pushed up against this and then up here is the other O-ring up here. And of course after uh, 10, 12 years almost uh, there's a lot of uh, buildup in here. So I went, went in here just with some really really fine steel wool and basically just polished the inside surface of this so that the new O-rings would have a nice clean surface to push up against. Don't want to use any hard tools or anything here because you don't want to scratch this to the point where you got little grooves that the water could get through. It needs to be nice and nice and smooth. Okay, then you just uh, put the O-rings down over here. You have to carefully slide them down over here and uh, make sure they don't have any twists that they're laying flat uh, inside the grooves because once again this is the water seal and that's the water seal for when the water comes around here and is supposed to go out the spout. That almost rhymes, huh? Then you can uh, take the spout and wiggle it back down over those two uh, O-rings. And if you use a little bit of liquid dish uh, soap, uh, you know, kind of as a lubricant, they'll, it'll slide down there fairly easily. And you want to make sure it comes down all the way to the nylon thrust washer bearing down here, right? So make sure it goes all the way down. And then, of course, it should twist easily. And then you can put the uh, cartridge in. Make sure you get the tab in the back. Otherwise, it won't go in. Right? So the tab goes in the back. Uh, but before you do that, make sure you look down inside here and uh, ascertain if there's any gunkies or corrosion down here. But uh, Because if it's uh, kind of rough or corroded, uh, when you push this down here, that little rubber gasket on the end of that cartridge is not going to seal very well. So make sure that's cleaned out down in there. And just drop that cartridge in. And then take the nut and put it back on. Hopefully, if you're changing yours, they've got the uh, brass one for you. All right. Then you take the uh, this uh, uh, cover right here, and this screws back down again to one hold this down. All right. So it's it holds the nozzle. So when you move it back and forth, it doesn't move up and down. Because if it does, of course, you end up with a leak. So uh, put that down fairly tightly. You should, of course, still be able to swing the nozzle back and forth. Um, and you're just about done. All you have to do then is put the handle back on, right, like that. Single handle right here. Here's the nozzle sticking out over here. That's why I couldn't find it on their website, because uh, all their handles have like a hole in it here, you know, like a groove or a kind of an oblong hole. Uh, so you put that back on and then take that pointy little screw and screw that thing back down in there. And I had a little bit of difficulty with that. You've got to make sure that you're using the right size uh, screwdriver tip because you're threading basically down through that nylon piece. Snap the cap back on so you know you got your Price Fister stuff on the right. And you're ready for uh, testing. Right? So open the shutoff valves down underneath and uh, test for smoke. Well, I hope there's no smoke. You probably should test for water. And I'll wait a couple hours and go out and check it again because, as I said, I looked at mine when I turned the stuff back on and, and it wasn't leaking. And I waited a day and came back out and there was water all over the place again. So um, make sure you check it a couple times after you've done all this. Now, uh, I'm uh, one of those terminally curious old geezers and I had to see what in the world was going on inside that cartridge. I love tearing things apart. 
I used to do that when I was a kid too. I just wasn't very good at putting them back together. Well, stuff like this, you can't put back together, so go ahead and tear it apart. And I did. Um, so when I pulled it off, pulled the cap off here, I just snapped these little tabs that were on the side here, just broke them off. Uh, what I found was this little piece right here, it just kind of slides around really loose under the control of these three tabs right here. It lets this thing go forward, backward, and side to side. Kind of interesting. I'm thinking, well, that's kind of stuck on there, but it slides around. I wonder what that is. So when I lifted that off, what I found was this is the underside of it, and it kind of correlates to this. So as you move this whole thing around, this center hole over this center hole kind of moves around. <laughs> right and it picks up these back pieces right here where the hot and cold water comes through and then lets the water go down through here and, and out the spout right so this uh, piece right here right here uh, mates in the back side of that part right there and then this part right here goes on to the bottom side of this right here so pretty clever uh, engineering on how they did that so then I pulled this thing out and said okay what's what's under that and uh, under that is guess what a couple actually three more o-rings that uh, seat up against here so there's little o-rings all over the place marvels of modern engineering amazing um, certainly beats uh, carrying water up to your house in a bucket yeah. okay there we go finito uh, that's uh, my second uh, adventure in fixing faucets in my house uh, I'm guessing that uh, I'm probably going to be doing this a few more places as uh, all the stuff was put in at the same time. I've already had to change uh, a couple of uh, flapper valves in the toilets because they've gotten all dented from about 12 years of flapping up and down. So I guess I'm going to become a part-time plumber here on a few more projects. But uh, we're done for this one. 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, over and out.